I recently was asked, how did my husband and I get involved with the sacred languages of Hebrew and Aramaic? So the long and short of it is, is that we were taken on quite an amazing journey. When we were involved in the Christian church, we had a husband and wife that were pastors of the fellowship that we went to. And they would take turns every other weekend. She would teach and then he would teach. And one day she started bringing in Hebrew words. In fact, I believe one of the very first words that she brought to us to take a look at was the word Shalom. And I was so fascinated just hearing the basic meanings of each letter and how when they are combined you get a fuller understanding of what the word truly means versus what we get through translations. It planted a seed and I remember back then praying inwardly as a silent prayer, Oh Father, I really want to learn this language. I would love to know it. I just don't know how and I don't know where to go. And that was years ago. In fact, I'm sure that was probably about 20 years ago that I uttered that silent prayer within. In our goings and comings, <laughs> Ken and I kind of made a whirlwind tour of different faith beliefs. I was raised as a Baptist and my other half of the family, my mom and stepdad, were checking things out like the Mormon faith and got introduced to Jehovah Witnesses. And then later in my teen years, I was brought into the Pentecostal side of things and experienced that for a while, the spirit-filled churches. And then my husband and I were drawn into the Hebrew Roots Movement where we spent a decade. And that is when we really started diving into the Hebrew language because some of the fellowships that we were involved with would sing Hebraic songs and sing in the Hebrew tongue. And it was, there was something there, there was something so stirring that we needed to dive deeper. And so Spirit led us. Spirit took us on an amazing journey to dig here and dig there and find what we needed to as we allowed the languages to teach us. We didn't have a teacher. We didn't have somebody holding our hand. The Spirit did. And that is, that's how we learned it. It was all Spirit-led, and I'm really grateful for that because, because we didn't have a teacher. We were never put in a box to say that the language had to be perceived in one, just, in one way. And when I was introduced into Aramaic, probably about five years or so after the Hebrew language, no, let's, <laughs> no, more like 10 years after the Hebrew language because I was actually introduced to Hebrew language about 15 years ago. When I started studying the Aramaic and I saw that the Aleph was the same in Hebrew as it was in Aramaic, it kind of became a no-brainer. And, and then I was able to go into the study of comparisons between the Hebrew and the Aramaic to see see why, see certain movements of letters and why certain letters were expressed differently in Aramaic versus how they were expressed in Hebrew. So it was really a spirit-led journey in trusting the direction that we were being led into and I'm so grateful for it because through the spirit and through the letters themselves they became our guiding shepherds and teachers to get us to this place of understanding today and I am so grateful for it. And it is my honor and my pleasure to be able to turn around and teach that which I have learned, that which, that which I have compiled and put together in order to share with others so that it becomes a more streamlined process than that which my husband and I went through as we were gathering and assembling all the pieces in hopes that one day we would be able to turn and share this amazing, amazing language as Hebrew and Aramaic were never meant to be separated, but for comparison's sakes they were. So I'm grateful to be here to share it. I'm grateful to be able to answer these types of questions. And I will be excited even more so for those of you who want to enter in on this journey with Ken and I. We share it and teach it on our Patreon channel. We share excerpts of the trainings, the teachings here on YouTube. And it is our desire to be able to unify all of us together as the tribesmen are once again reuniting 
like they did in the time of King David. So in the time of the end, they will be known for their love for one another. And may the sacred languages be that tool which unites all of us as one. Shalom Shalom, Chaliva, and Chadutha. Namaste.